this activity where we'll use what we've learned so far to replace this sky with this new one. We'll also improve this bottom part because it's currently dull and washed out. All this in just about five minutes. First, I have both images opened in two tabs. You have them attached, so please work with me. I'll unlock this background layer by double-clicking it. I'll switch over to the new sky and I'll do that there as well. Now, I'll drag it from the canvas over in this tab. This is where we'll work. I've held down Shift so the sky was dropped in the middle of my canvas. Great, now I'll change the order of my layers. The initial photo should be above this new one. Right, now here's the tricky bit. We need to remove this current sky, and for that we'll use a layer mask. The best way to go about it is to create a selection beforehand, but I want you to learn to use the brush tool. So for this activity, we'll skip that step altogether and we'll rely on our painting skills. Enable a layer mask on this layer. Make sure your foreground colour is set to black and increase your brush size dramatically. I recommend you set its hardness to 100% for this top part. Now start painting in generous strokes. Your goal is to do most of the work in a few swipes. As you move more towards the bottom, it becomes increasingly difficult. Here you'll have to shrink your brush and most likely tone down your hardness. This is so we'll get a better transition. Here there's no secret, you have to be patient and take your time with it. Just in case you paint over these hills, switch to white and paint that area back in. My advice is you use a white brush at 100% hardness for this hill area to ensure this is going to look right. I'll speed up this process just a bit because it's a matter of going back and forth between settings. This is why these hotkeys are so valuable. X helps me switch between black and white, my square bracket keys adjust my size on the fly, and if you right click you get to change the hardness and a few other things. Remember when we talked about the importance of each area in Photoshop? The canvas was set at number 1 and I constantly mentioned you should keep your mouse cursor in this area rather than constantly moving back and forth between it and, say, the options bar. When you're in the zone, you don't need any distractions coming up, even if that means moving for a second. Thing is, in most cases, you'll need to move back and forth every few seconds. If you had to manually switch between your foreground and background colours by way of this tiny icon, you'd be here all day. That's unnerving. Anyway, now I'm done and this is what my result looks like. Some areas could be improved, but for demonstration purposes I think you get the idea. Take a moment and see how this looks. I think it's fine, but the sun is way too down for my taste. Luckily we can grab our sky layer and simply move it up. As you can see, there's no problem with me repositioning it. Great stuff, now let's tackle this bottom area. I'll first crop out this road since it's nothing nice to look at. Press C to get the crop tool and with the help of these handles take out this section. Looking good, now let's improve these greens. I'll hold CTRL and I'll click on my mask. Now this is selected and I can add an adjustment layer. Let's go with curves, this is going to be placed above my layer by the way. From this panel I'll grab this middle line and I'll move it up just a bit. This will lighten all these dark areas and it will help me see their details that much better. OK, something like this is going to do just fine. One more adjustment layer please. Reselect by control clicking and this time we'll go with another one. Let's choose Vibrance. Here I'll turn up both sliders significantly so you can clearly see what's going on even if you're not watching in HD. And that's my result. Enter full screen mode by tapping the F key twice and take a look at our progress. If anything isn't right, the great thing is we can further adjust it. You can double click on any of these layers and do your thing. Now it's your turn. I want you to upload two things in the comments section. First, a replica of what you've seen me do in this video. So use the same photos, the same adjustment layers and show me how well you've managed to brush along these hills. Next, take any two photos of your own and do the same thing. I look forward to it. Have fun!